All right, Ashray, I have an important mission for you. You have to optimize this VR game for mobile VR in less than 24 hours. Or let's say 24 hours. It's really, really important. And also, you can only use our hack as a last resort. No cheating here. And the whole universe depends on it. So if you are messing up, the universe explodes. But if you manage to get it, I can maybe get you one of these here. So stakes are high. Let's get started. All right, so I've got the project right here. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to switch the platform to Android, build it to my Quest 2 device and see what I've got to work. Okay, so I have the build ready and this looks really nice already. Uh, the environment looks a little dark. I have a feeling it's something to do with the lighting or maybe the baked lights have to be baked again. But generally feeling i can see there's a little of uh, you know the edges are not smooth and there's no lag as such but i'm really curious to see what the fps is i think i want to quit the app open the ovr metrics tool and let's uh, let's check out the fps first and we have fps of 72 and then a drop to 29 34 39 45 you gotta be kidding me oh god this is really bad but i don't see any lag but 24 fps is really really bad Seems like I have a lot of work to do. Alright, so just to give you some context here, I have a scene with three rooms. So the player initially starts from this room over here, which is room zero, and then moves on to room one, and then we have the room two. We have the room three here, and then the player can finally go up this elevator and observe this really nice looking earth. Now while navigating to the project, I noticed that each of this room has a very, very high polygon count. So I asked Dinesh about it and he told me two things. First is I'm not allowed to reduce the polygon count, and second, I'm not allowed to use different rooms in different scenes. The task is to optimize the exact same scene and that's the challenge. So I plan to do this in three stages. Stage one is going to be the basic optimization, like setting the lighting pixel count to one, having the anisotropic texture set to per texture, using texture compression of ETC2 and having the stereo rendering mode set to multi-view instead of multi-pass. If this does not work out, then we'll talk about stage two. Okay, so again, it starts with around 70 FPS and it's dropping to 56, 53. I think this is already much better than the first time that we saw, which was around 24. But we'll really get to know after I look towards my right, or towards my right, and that's because this has a lot of poly count. So there we go. And here you can see the FPS is actually dropping. It's around 36. So to be honest, we were at 24. So now we are at 36. So I guess the basic optimization gave us around 10 FPS more, but there's still a lot of things to do. Now, one more thing I noticed is that the lighting is still black and that's because I haven't baked the lights. So that would be the next stage. So let's bake the lights and see what we get. Okay, so I have the third build ready with the lighting spake. Let's check this out. Okay, so here we are in the scene. It starts off with again 70 and drops down all the way to 40, 43. But the environment looks much better with the lighting spake. But what really matters is the FPS, which is right now at 36, which then is not dropping, which is cool, but it's not raising higher as well, which means that it's going to take us to the next stage, which is occlusion culling. Now, most of you might not know what occlusion culling is, so I'm gonna quickly run through it. So first in our scene, we need to select all the objects that are static and mark them as static. These are the objects that do not move in your scene. Then go to Windows, Rendering and click on Occlusion Culling. And now you need to select the static objects once again and make sure that the occluder static and occluded static are checked. And then all you need to do is click on Bake. Now once it's done baking, you can click on Visualize, select the XR rig. And now as I move the XR rig from room 0 to room 1 to room 2, you can see that only those that are within the camera's uh, visibility are rendered and rest are not, thereby increasing performance. But there's one thing that I noticed is that even though I'm in room 0 which has a door, for some reason it's not occluding it and the other rooms are seen as well. How to fix it, I can go to bake, have the smallest occluder set as 1 and we'll have the smallest hole set as 0 0.01 and click on bake once again. Okay, so we have the scene baked once again. So if I click on visualize and select the XR rig, we can still see the other rows and I know exactly why that's happening. And that's because if you see the door, it is actually a dynamic object. So we didn't mark it as static. So therefore it's not going to occlude anything. Now there's a fix for this as well. And that's by using occlusion portals. Adding occlusion portal is really simple. We need to select the door that's dynamic and we need to add a component that's called as occlusion portal. Now this is like a box collider where you need to adjust its size. So let's do that. All right, so there we go. So now this component has a parameter called open. So when this is checked, it means that this door is open and the camera can see outside. And so all these rooms will be rendered. Now, if this is unchecked, it means that the door is closed and you will not be able to see any of the other rooms. So now this is something that can be done via script. Now, what we have done is this uh, particular button inside room zero, it already has an event. So when I click on this button, the door opens. So I'm gonna use the same button. And, in, and when I click on the button, I would want to Go ahead, select the door and select occlusion portal and we're gonna set the door as open, which means that initially it has to be closed and then once I press this button, it's gonna set it to open and then I should be able to see everything else. All right, so now to check this out once again, we'll go to occlusion, we'll go to bake and click on bake. 
Okay, so it's been baked. Now we can click on visualize and click on XR ring. And you can already see here that the other rooms are not seen. Now if I move the XR ring, only then it will be seen. Now the thing that we want to test out is actually the door. So what we will do is let's get the inspector window over here and select the door. And now when we uncheck this or when we check this as open, you can see that the other rooms are seen. Now I need to do the same thing for these doors and these doors as well. So I'm going to do that and we'll build it and test it out as well. All right, so I have the build ready with all the occlusion culling set up. Let's test this out. And so here we are in the scene. It starts off with 73 FPS, which is really nice. And I think it's uh, around somewhere that range. We really get to know once you open this door. So let's go ahead and open it. And yes, okay, there's a slight drop, I think to 51 or something. And then it comes back stable at around 64, which is really, really cool. Just around five to six more FPS and we'll be good to go and i know how we can solve it and that's by tweaking some things from the urp maybe post processing and the shadows texture size but we'll get there so after 14 hours of work and three different stages of optimization here we are at an average of 72 frames per second having the deadline as 24 hours was a bit intense but at the end bringing the game from 24 fps to 72 fps feels like a big achievement also if you're wondering what was the hack that dinesh allowed me to use as a last resort was well, it was nothing but enabling the dual core support on the Quest 2 device to enhance the performance. I'm not sure if you know this already, but with a simple line of code, you can increase the performance of your application on the Quest 2 devices. However, since I was able to achieve a 72 FPS just by optimization, I didn't have to increase the performance. And you know what's the best part? I get a Quest 3 for free. Alright, so that's it for this video. If you want me to make a separate video explaining the different types of optimization, then do let us know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next one.